Wind is a resource that mankind has been using for their energy needs for thousands of years, from propelling boats and using windmills in the ancient times to generating electricity through wind turbines in the modern era. Looking at the past trends and the current scenario of technological advancements, solar and wind still seem to be the main drivers in the coming years for helping the world switch to low-carbon future as there is still some time left for the alternative energy techniques such as nuclear fusion to prove itself from the engineering standpoint. Eolink A French company is all set to build a full-scale demonstrator of its simple and yet surprisingly scalable wind turbine idea which reduces materials and weight drastically and promises a big saving in energy costs without even tinkering with the basic wind turbine technology. Their innovation makes the wind turbine way cheaper and way more powerful than the traditional ones with a strong promise of cost advantage at every step starting right from materials and engineering to deployment, scaling and lifetime maintenance. How are they doing it? And are these claims really making it happen? We'll see in this video. I'm Abhishek and this is Revolutionary Engineering. Before diving further into the Eolink's idea, it's important to know what is that one thing that can make energy scale to its highest potential and in the fastest possible way. Just have a look at the statistics. The amount of electricity generated by wind alone increased by almost 273 terawatt hours in 2021 to reach 1870 terawatt hours that was 55% higher growth than that achieved in 2020. And that was the highest among all renewable power generation technologies. Wind remains the leading non-hydro renewable technology generating 1870 terawatt hours in 2021, almost as much as all the others combined. And this data comes from the report of International Energy Agency. To get on a track with the net zero emissions by 2050 scenario, annual wind electricity generation of about 8000 terawatt hours has to be achieved in 2030. This requires to raise average annual capacity additions to almost 250 gigawatts, more than double 2020's record growth. To achieve this, efforts are mainly required on two fronts. First, facilitating permits for onshore wind and second, cost reductions for offshore wind. In the case of onshore wind, innovation is focused on increasing the technology's productivity, especially in areas with low wind conditions by developing turbines with longer blades and higher towers. However, the maximum height of onshore wind turbines is often restricted in certain regions for environmental and public acceptance reasons, which limits the scope of possible innovation. In the offshore wind segment, in contrast, there is no such turbines as restriction. Innovation is therefore focused on designing larger turbines which allows reductions in the overall cost of power generation and for this reason, offshore wind seems to be the fastest way to scale wind energy. The development of cost-competitive and safe-floating offshore wind turbine farms could unblock the vast potential of ocean areas where water depth is too great for fixed turbines and that could be a vital energy transition tool for countries such as Japan, Korea, France and the west coast of the United States. You may be surprised to know that in 2021, of the total 830 gigawatts of wind capacity installed, 93% were onshore systems with the remaining 7% offshore wind farms. This clearly shows how nascent the offshore wind sector is and the kind of power generation potential it has. But to bring energy costs down to a competitive level in case of an offshore wind, radically different approach is required. This is because as the depth of water increases, typical horizontal axis design approach of anchoring a giant pole in the seabed becomes more and more difficult and thus there is a need to float the turbines. But even with floating systems traditionally used in horizontal axis design, you need an enormous amount of ballast material at the bottom. So it becomes quite difficult and expensive to deploy and service. The huge fan mounted on front side of the nacelle creates unbalanced forces that can cause strain on various parts of the turbine including the main shaft and the rotor hub. Therefore, the one-sided weight of this fan demands enormous bearings to take the load. Its advantage lies in its pyramid structure, replacing the single pole of the horizontal axis design with a pair of triangles. One immediate benefit of this design is that it distributes the fan weight evenly between bearings at both ends rather than just one. And another one is a considerable weight reduction by deploying four slimmer supports to form a pyramid shape instead of a single monolithic pole. A pyramid provides a wider base at the bottom as opposed to a single point and therefore the need for heavy ballast material to keep the things upright is reduced drastically. A comparative analysis shows that since the Eolink structure distributes the weight of the nozzle evenly among the four masts, the stresses are better distributed and the steel thicknesses are reduced compared to a single mast solution. In comparison, a single mast solution is 40% heavier. This difference represents a saving of 10% on the levelized cost of energy, according to the company. 
which is quite logical as 40% less material translates to a higher saving on initial costs. Finally, the float made up of four columns makes it possible to reduce the dimensions by 20% in length and width compared to a float with three columns. This also helps in reducing the overall mass. Such a design is not new when it comes to stabilizing massive structures. One example is a ferris wheel that is suspended in much the same way. But can the same pyramid design be used on land-based turbines too? Well, the answer is no because any wind turbine needs to be able to face into the wind to maximize their output. For this, they need a yawing mechanism that orients the rotor into the wind. Since the land-based turbines are fixed to the ground, they have no other option but to rely on the yaw mechanism. But in deep ocean, that is not the case because there the heavy structures can be made to float. However, using this ability to float as a resource to replace your mechanism is a daunting task, especially with the traditional technology of horizontal axis design. But Eolink has exploited this ability to its favor by applying a well-known technique used in the oil and gas industry called as a single point mooring. In the system, the floating wind turbine is anchored on a single point. The single anchor point is connected to three anchors by synthetic lines. Two nylon hoses connect the float to its buoy to provide redundancy and dampen the effect of the waves. Now whichever way the wind blows, the turbine gets blown in that direction and with the tether mounted to the front side, it always ends up facing into the wind. But there's another problem that needs to be solved and that is the misalignment between wind direction and the ocean current if this ever happens, though quite rare in deep oceans. Traditional floating wind turbines use your motor for this purpose and with multiple mooring points, this misalignment can be resolved as the turbine movement is relatively restricted. But for a mobile platform of offshore turbine with a single point mooring, it's a bit difficult task to be achieved. This is where the company's dynamic ballast system comes in that allows orientation to be controlled over a range of 120 degrees. Here the company has not disclosed much about how their ballast system could be used to reorient the turbine with the wind in case of the ocean currents in a different direction. The possible way could be to respond to changes in the wind direction by tilting the structure to align the turbine with the wind. This happens because when the float pitches, the rotor of the wind turbine will also experience a pitching motion, which can induce a yawing moment on the turbine due to the gyroscopic effect. This yawing moment can cause the turbine to yaw or rotate about its vertical axis, causing it to reorient with the wind direction. But this system has to work in conjunction with single point mooring. So the wake left behind front row of turbines can also be diverted with such orientation control system without using any active yaw control mechanism. Apart from this, Eolink's fatigue resistance is much better. Its structure does not have highly constrained areas because of the distribution of forces between the four masts, unlike traditional turbines, wherein the combination of the wind load on the turbine and the weight of the turbine itself generates bending and torsional forces at the mast foot. We know that for the wind turbine technologies to be competitive, size of the turbine blades is an important factor as larger turbines can capture more wind energy, which can increase the power output. So the trick is simple, just keep increasing the length. But is it that simple? Well, if their lengthening requires them to be weighed down, which leads to cyclic inertial fatigue. Though it's true that the weight of the blades must be increased in order to increase their length, because the blades must be able to withstand the wind loads and other environmental forces, that they'll be subjected to during operation. And adding weight to the blades helps to increase their stiffness and strength, which is absolutely necessary to prevent them from bending or breaking under these loads. However, adding weight leads to cyclic inertial fatigue that occurs when the blade is subjected to alternating loads, such as due to rotation of the turbine, thereby reducing its fatigue life. But Eolink's design has another ability that seems to solve this problem too, and that is the increased distance between the blades and the mast. This larger gap eliminates the risk of blades colliding with the tower. This gives Eolinks the freedom to design more flexible blades. The saving in mass thus achieved makes it possible to lengthen the blades. This alone can result in 6% increase in power output, keeping the generator same as in a traditional horizontal axis turbine. But up to this point, I have just talked about the technical advantages of this unique design. But faster and realistic scaling of the wind turbines is equally important and depends largely on three key aspects. Number one is the low investment, number two, faster deployment ability, and number three, ability to mass produce. Hence, after the commercial demonstrator of 5 MW and from 13 MW onward turbines, the company plans to use available components to minimize infrastructure investment 
and use shipyard facilities for constructing them. The Eulink's ability to deliver an operational fully assembled wind turbine might not sound a big deal at first glance, but by looking at onshore and fixed bottom turbines, it starts to make sense. Sub-assemblies of the onshore turbine needs to be transported on site by truck, sometimes requiring special road building. Assembly of the offshore turbine mast and its blades is made at the production site that requires costly positioning vessels. Euling, on the other hand, can be entirely built onshore and commissioned on site with a plug and play connection enabling faster deployment. The single point mooring enables decoupling of the anchors and main grid installation from turbine commissioning. Each anchor linked to the seabed can be used by up to three turbines. Once anchors are set, the single point mooring system along with mooring lines are installed by carrying them using a light vessel. With the same process, the grid connection using inter-array cables between wind turbines is set up. And finally, the turbine is stored to the site and another light vessel connects the hoses and the dynamic cable to the turbine. In this entire setup process, if you could notice, equaling turbine can easily be disconnected from the grid while keeping the whole array functional. Such a super modular system offers higher flexibility for marine operations. Also, the Eulinx floater can be towed on site at the speed of 7 knots or around 8 miles per hour due to its hull shape offering low drag and better stability. Whenever the turbine needs heavy maintenance, it is taken to the harbor. The high towing speed combined with the decoupling ability enables the float to be disconnected from the buoy and quickly towed back to the harbor by a lighter vessel where the turbine is replaced by another one. So it completely eliminates the need for specialized crane ships for deployment or maintenance that charge hefty amount for the service. Because you can just tow them back into port at the point of service where it's quite easier and cheaper. This reduces overall maintenance costs. For mass producing the turbine, Eulink is expecting to have its own production line before 2030 to produce 67 wind turbines per year. But their current focus is on the float manufacturing as they can easily source blades and generators from the already mature wind turbine industry. So between materials, engineering, building, deployment, scalability and lifetime maintenance, this design shows a promise of cost advantage at every step of the way. The rising material cost and supply chain issues makes these advantages look even more prominent. Eulink is planning to commission a 5 megawatt pre-commercial floating in 2024 at the SEM REV test site in France, for which it has already received a funding of 14.9 million euros from the French funding program France 2030. This 5 megawatt demonstrator will weigh 1100 tons with a square base 52 meters on each side. The rotor itself will have a 143 meters diameter using at least 30% less steel than a traditional turbine for the same rated output. With its systems in place, Eulink expects to hit a mark of 35 euros per megawatt hour as the levelized cost of energy by 2030 with its full-scale commercial unit. Now this sounds astounding as the levelized cost for commercial-scale offshore wind projects in the United States is $84 per megawatt hour according to Offshore Wind Market Report 2022 by Department of Energy. So that was all about this innovation. But there is another interesting technology that promises to deliver up to 300% more power output from a single wind turbine that you can watch by clicking the i button. And don't forget to share and subscribe our channel to know about the latest developments in renewable energy, science and engineering. Thanks for watching.